I cannot believe I just did that. <laughs> so to answer your question on how my fitness journey has gone since quitting Beachbody, to summarize everything, Beachbody gave me a lot of body issues. I feel very uncomfortable in my skin and I'm doing the work I need to do to reverse that and fix that and love myself where I'm at and not be defined by a certain body type. So your girl is an ex beach buddy coach. I did this for five years. If you've watched my previous videos, you're aware, and I am here to educate people on the dangers of MLM. However, I also love to address topics surrounding my life, answering your questions. And one of the questions I received mo more recently was, how has your fitness journey changed since leaving Beachbody? This is really weird for me to admit because I actually love the workouts and for a long time, I loved the programs, Beachbody, the meal plans, everything, Shakeology. And now that I'm away from it, it's like my brain is detoxing and letting these thoughts go a little bit because I'm realizing that I have been brainwashed by diet culture. And I think a lot of women especially have because we're taught to believe in our society that we're meant to be a certain body type and a certain size, that there's only one standard that is ideal and that we need to measure up. I remember learning about BMI and learning that that was a good way to measure whether or not you're, you need to lose a few pounds. I even remember talking to my doctor about that and you know him saying, okay, watch the BMI. If it starts to creep up to this, you know, then you're not in good shape. And I later learned that BMI is, was actually formulated by men, specifically studying men, not women. BMI was actually created in the 19th century. So it's incredibly outdated. And it's also a very cookie cutter way of determining whether or not someone is healthy without taking into account a bunch of other factors like their genetics, their muscle. It just looks at how much you weigh and your height and your age and it gives you a number. So I'll go ahead and put a link from NPR about this below, but it says here that the person who dreamed up the BMI said explicitly that it could not and should not be used to indicate the level of fatness in an individual. The BMI was introduced in the early 19th century by a Belgian named Lambert Aldolfe Jacques Quetbet. <laughs> He was a mathematician, not a physician. He produced the formula to give a quick and easy way to measure the degree of obesity of the general population to assist the government in allocating resources. In other words, it's a 200 year old hack. It is scientifically nonsensical. There is no physiological reason to square a person's height. Moreover, it ignores waist size, which is a clear indicator of obesity level. It makes no allowance for the relative proportions of bone, muscle, and fat in the body. The bone is denser than muscle and twice as dense as fat. So a person with strong bones, good muscle tone, and low fat will have a high BMI. But there's a lot of reasons why BMI is not an accurate way to measure whether or not a person is healthy. So for a long time, like I always looked at that, like if my BMI was not a certain number, then I needed to lose weight. And so when I started Beachbody, you know, I was I don't know if I was probably like obese, but I definitely was overweight. So society has told us that we should be a certain body type when in reality, some people have bigger muscles or bigger bones. Like that really is a thing. They really say that only one size is beautiful is a societal standard that we cannot live up to. It will never happen. And it puts a lot of pressure on us. Being a part of diet culture is really awful for our psyche because what ends up happening is, at least this is what happened for me, I was in this binge and restrict cycle. I started looking at certain food as healthy and certain food as unhealthy. So when I started Beachbody, I stopped eating bread. I used to make homemade bread with my KitchenAid mixer all the time. It was one of my favorite things. I stopped making homemade bread. I stopped making cupcakes and cookies. I started looking up healthy alternatives for treats, healthy alternatives for carbs. Anybody heard of cauliflower rice, right? or zucchini noodles or banana ice cream, like whatever I could find to only eat healthy. But what ended up happening was because I was restricting so much that I, my body just couldn't take it anymore. So then I would overdo it and gain some weight back. Inevitably, that's what happened when I quit Beachbody is I finally was like, oh, thank God. I don't have to count these containers anymore. I don't have to look at all food as 
evil or bad, but because I had restricted my intake and my access to, you know, yummy food, the reward center in my brain went fucking crazy. And so I started eating like cookies and cake and all that again. And that's so typical in diet culture is, that, and that's how you end up with the yo-yo dieting and stuff is because you're binging after you restrict for so long. The past few months have been that for me. I have been gaining weight and I don't know what I'm supposed to weigh. I don't know what a healthy weight is for my body. And so I found this dietitian on Instagram and I was following her and I decided to join one of her free challenges. Um, what is her name? Her name is Colleen. I will definitely link her Instagram in the description box below. Her name is Colleen. And she talks a lot on Instagram about, you know, it's okay to eat a whole banana. And th those are the kinds of things that I need to hear because while I was sucked into diet culture, I only would eat half of a banana. And so I joined her challenge to find my set point weight and I'm still working on it. I'm of course behind everybody because she posts like so many videos a day and I just can't keep up with it. I'm like, oh my gosh, I've got too much going on. Today I watched the video and the challenge and the group coaching session and it was about letting go of control. We use these containers, for instance, in Beachbody as a way to control our, our nutrition intake, right? It's giving us a false sense of control because we think, okay, if I just do this, then I'll lose weight. But then what ends up happening is your brain is like, oh, but I can't have cookies. And when you're like, I can't have cookies, then all you want is cookies. So then when you finally reward yourself with cookies, instead of eating just one or two cookies, you eat the entire package because your brain is just like, oh, starved for cookies. And so that's why there's all this talk about finding balance. And you can have cookies and that's okay. And if it feels good to eat one or two, that's great. And if it feels good to eat the whole package, that's okay. And that's weird because I'm like, that doesn't seem right <laughs> because that goes against everything I've learned in diet culture. But the idea is if we let go of this control, then hopefully we can get a, get a hold of our mindset a little bit more to not feel like since I can't have that thing, I want that thing more. And that's what I've been struggling with for the past several months. Saying no to things because in my mind, I'm like, this is bad. This is bad. I can't have this. This is bad. She gave us a challenge today and the challenge was to pick one area of control to let go of. I will tell you, this is going to be really hard for me <laughs> and uh, because I'm afraid if I let go of this thing that it's all going to spiral. It's all going to go out of control. Like if I let go of this thing, then I am going to get fat. And that's really hard to decide that I'm going to do that. But what she's teaching us about, if we let go of these things and pay attention to our hunger cues, that's going to get us a lot further in the long run than this false sense of control of like, I can limit, I can restrict, and then I'll get the results that I want. So she gave the example, for instance, of a newborn baby, right? Newborn babies intuitively know how much to eat. They turn their head when they're full, and when they're hungry, they cry. They listen to their bodies and their hunger cues. But what happens when we, as grown adults, have been conditioned by diet culture, we have believed that we can't trust our own hunger cues. So I no longer intuitively know how to eat. And that is what I'm gonna try to figure out over the next little while. I'm not sure how long. I'm just gonna try to figure it out. My scale made me feel like shit. Before I stepped on the scale, I told myself, no matter what the number says, you are beautiful. It doesn't matter even if it says this number, okay? I'm not gonna tell you what the number is because I don't wanna trigger anybody, okay? But even if it says this number, and so I said, okay, and then I stepped on the scale, and lo and behold, it read the exact number that was in my mind that I was like, even if it says this number, you're still beautiful, and I felt like utter shit. Today, the area of control that I've decided to give up is I'm actually going to smash my scale. I'm going to take out that anger, and that frustration at how that scale has had me feel for the past several years. And I'm going to really truly accept that the scale does not define my worth. 
the scale does not define my value or my beauty and that I am much more important than what I look like to other people. When my life ends, people are not gonna talk about how much I weighed or how fit I was. They're gonna talk about how I made them feel. They're gonna talk about how I impacted their life. They're not gonna remember if I got chubby for a little while at one point in my life. Nobody's gonna talk about that at my funeral. So I'm gonna take a moment to prep myself and we're gonna smash the scale together. I would invite you, if you're wanting to get more in touch with your intuitive side when it comes to eating, check out that link. This lady is amazing. They join one of her free challenges and try to like tackle these issues, <laughs> these body image issues that we all struggle with. If there's an area of control that you struggle with when it comes to your nutrition, if it is counting calories, having to log everything into MyFitnessPal, weighing yourself every day, using your 21 day fix containers, whatever it is, I invite you to let go of that and not feel bound by that. And don't fear, like that's, that's the hardest thing I think about this is the fear of what's gonna happen if I let go of this. So, all right, let's go smash the scale. Let's do this. We're gonna go ahead and give up some control. And I'm gonna say, fuck you, Skill. You don't own me. You don't have any right to tell me how I feel about myself anymore. And neither does anyone else who thinks that, you know, being a certain body type or size, like that does not define my value. That does not define my worth. And I'm ready <laughs> to let go of this piece of control. Oh my God, I can't believe I did that. Dude, I can hear it. It's like, do you hear it? It's like poppy. Oh my gosh. I cannot believe I just did that. <laughs> did you hear it? It made like this weird like sound when it was all broken. Holy crap. It's such a weight off my chest right now. Like I cannot. And I'm gonna work on just learning to trust my body and I'm still going to move my body and I'm going to attempt to eat with with food food freedom. And you know, it's not like I'm gonna eat a dozen donuts every day, but you know, I, uh, I'm excited to learn more about that intuitive eating side. So <sighs> I can't believe I did that. <laughs> <laughs> so to answer your question on how my fitness journey has gone since quitting Beachbody, Beachbody gave me a lot of body issues. I feel very uncomfortable in my skin and I'm doing the work I need to do to reverse that and fix that and love myself where I'm at and not be defined by a certain body type. I want you to understand that even though I'm giving up this area of control, it doesn't mean that I'm gonna go off the deep end. My intention is to give up this piece of control so that I can relearn how to listen to my hunger cues and not let a scale define whether or not I feel good about myself, whether or not I can eat. I'm not going to let a scale punish me and tell me that because I messed up the day before, like they talk about in 2B Mindset, oh my gosh, because I messed up the day before, I'm not allowed to eat as much today or, or I'm not going to feel like I have to earn my food. I'm letting go of that. That could mean I gain more weight, but at the end of the day, it's all about finding that set point weight that is healthy for your body type and not letting society tell you what is acceptable and what you should look like. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, if you can relate, definitely hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can get more content like this. Definitely give it a like if you feel like it resonated with you. I'm so excited that you decided to tune in with me today and join me on this intuitive eating journey that I have decided to participate in since leaving the MLM. And just know that your worth is not dependent on the number on the scale and your worth is not dependent on fitting into a certain size or body type. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.